welcome back to the Tectonic Takes podcast. We have a bit of a crossover episode for you this time. We have a guest from another one of our hosts in the Beautiful Game Network, San Jose Earthquakes and SC Cincinnati colliding for this episode. We have Abby Rose from the Tectonic uh, from the Soccer Crush podcast. How are you doing, Abby? I am thrilled to be here hanging out with you. And yeah. a crossover episode. This will be fun. Yeah, it's it was fun when you gave me the opportunity to speak in an episode uh, of your podcast, Soccer Crush, uh, last season, 2020. It feels like it's been like just <laughs> yesterday and simultaneously five years ago because we're still in the pandemic. That's exactly how time works in the pandemic. And you absolutely crushed it. So, yeah. So how have you been lately? I know the podcast has been going well. You've been naming biweekly this season, right? Yeah, we've been, you know, the podcast is going great. It's so much fun growing the community, meeting new people. Um, I learned so much. Um, This is actually like a learning experiment for me is I just, everybody tells me who they're crushing on or what teams they like, and I get to go explore it and talk about it with them. And I'm excited to be here and talk about the quakes with you. Yeah. And I'm glad you're here. Uh, We both represent some of the clubs that maybe for good reasons are under the radar sometimes in terms of the greater MLS conversation. If you were to go on the extra time podcast with Andrew Wiebe and those guys on MLSsoccer.com, when you rank their favorite clubs to talk about with the Seattle's, the Atlanta's, the LA galaxies, we're probably at highest middle of the pack. So, Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, (laughs) FC Cincinnati fan, it's always like, the negative attention that we get. And I think that's probably true just in sports in general, those smaller market clubs tend to get overlooked, but it doesn't mean that they're not as great. They don't have as much talent or fun or fan bases. And really that's what it's about. So. Yeah. San Jose is an interesting case because we're technically not a small market. San Jose is the largest city by population in Northern California, third largest in California behind San Diego and Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles being the first, uh, but still, San Francisco is so well known. It's so iconic. Golden Gate Bridge. It's you know has the Giants and 49ers. It has it kind of overshadows San Jose, even though Sharks and Earthquakes fans are often Giants and 49ers fans. Some are A's and Raiders fans. So there's a lot of overlap. And then you got the Warriors. So it's wow. a weird situation. But yeah, in terms of MLS, if the Stars are headed toward California, they're going to LAFC and LA Galaxy first. So I definitely can relate in that sense. <laughs> I don't know why they would do that. Yeah, I don't know. Ohio <laughs> yeah. just has this other little tiny club called the Columbus Crew, and we don't talk about them. Yeah. All right. So today we have a lot to talk about. Uh, normally, we would go in greater depth in one specific San Jose Earthquakes game. So for all of you listening today, we're still going to talk about that game. We're still going to get through listener questions, but we're going to also mix in some other topics here. So I'm going to spread it out a little bit more today. And in the future, we will go in more in depth in other games as well. And given both our clubs lost in similar fashions to late goals, 1 0 score lines, maybe it's for the best we don't dwell on them too long. <laughs> that was weird. If I can sum up FC Cincinnati's season um, and potentially their status in MLS so far. Mm-hmm. They are Charlie Brown, and then the other MLS clubs are Lucy Mm -hmm. taking the football away at the last second, right? That's accurate. Um, It's a train wreck. It's fun. (laughs) It's Uh, like you can't look away. No, we keep showing up, and we keep watching and keep supporting. Mm -hmm. And I think Cincinnati fans are like that in general. Um, But (laughs) we're still trying. And technically, in all technicalities, they are better than they were last season. Yeah, that is true. And I, I believe so too. I'm not an FC Cincinnati fan. So if for what it's worth, I agree with you that they have improved, but it's more improvements still needed. Uh, I fully agree. <laughs> I mean, they had what, like a $15 million signing between last season and this season and still performing pretty terribly. So make whatever judgments you will. All right. And thoughts on Yapstam and what he's done at FC Cincinnati so far. Uh, I'm familiar with him through his uh, playing days at Manchester United, but I don't know too much about him as a coach. Um, I think the weird 
thing about Cincinnati is we haven't really had a coach for an entire season. So it's really hard to implement any kind of style or anything like that. So I don't happen to hate Yapstam. I think he's he's doing better. Um, I, I everybody's gonna have their opinion, right? It's a hot yeah. take. This is my hot take: is I don't blame Yap. The tectonic take, because we have the tectonic <laughs> takes podcast. <laughs> yeah. That's my tectonic take: is I don't blame Yap. I think you know he needs to do a little bit better about making substitutions earlier. Um, maybe be a little more cognizant that your forwards are running a lot more than your defenders. He's made a comment about that. He was like, well, when I played, I didn't get subbed out. Well, no. Yeah. You were a defender. Of course you mm-hmm. wouldn't. <laughs> so I think he needs to try some new things though. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe play with your lineup a little bit. Yap. Okay. So speaking of lineups, this is the lineup he went with for this game against Inter Miami at the TQL stadium. Kenneth Vermeer in goal. That was a Interesting decision instead of the Polish goalkeeper, Przemysław Titan. Yeah. Then you got Nick Haglund, Jeff Cameron, and Gustavo Valesia in the back three. Mm-hmm. You have Isaac Atanga, Harris Medun Janin, Yuya Kubo, Alan Cruz, and Avalo Barreal in their midfield five. Barreal and Atanga, the wingers, and then the rest of the center midfielders. And then a strike partnership between Luciano Acosta and Brenner, two of the DPs there. What do you think about that lineup? Um, I think we need to stop starting Kenneth Vermeer. Oh, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I don't think he's the goalkeeper that Yopstam wants him to be. I think so. Teton is lovingly called TT here. Um, okay. I think he's fantastic. And I am surprised we haven't seen him more this season. Um, yeah. I think Vermeer just makes silly mistakes and they cost goals. <laughs> and and that's too expensive right now. We don't we don't have time to do that um but for the rest of the the lineup i think that's pretty typical of of what we're seeing this season i think with the exception of um moderita who is oh, yeah. Rico right now i would have put Madara in had we had him he is just absolute fire and fun to watch so right i imagine jeff cameron's not your favorite player though uh no for reasons i'm sure you know why <laughs> yeah we don't have to get into them but i'm sure the listeners of the podcast know exactly what we're talking I, about too <laughs> yeah, i think people like him because he's a good player personally yeah. i just overlook him he was uh one of three u.s men's national team players along with breck shea and maurice adu to transfer to stoke city back in the 2010s early to mid 2010s His European career was the only one who survived, um, whatever you make of that. And speaking of Breck Shea, we saw him on the other side for Inter-Miami, and it was a tale of two halves in this game. It was a tale of two halves for Breck Shea. You had Breck Shea at left back, and his assignment was containing the Ghanaian winger, Isaac Atanga, who for me was their best player in this game for FC Cincinnati. But then Breck Shea, I mean – Phil Neville decided not to substitute Breck Shea uh, for someone else. Uh, perhaps uh, Kevin Leardam, who did make an appearance that game, he could have used him as a fullback and perhaps changed that matchup a bit. And you managed to write it out, uh, Gary Neville. Uh, Phil Neville, sorry. Two Neville brothers confused me. Phil Neville is the coach of Inter Miami. And he, that decision paid off for him because Breck Shea scored the winning goal assisted by Nicholas Figal in the 90th minute. And this has just been rinse and repeat for FC Cincinnati. They've dropped so many points from winning or drawing positions this season. Absolutely. Um, They don't capitalize ever. I mean, they just, I feel like there's not a lot of follow through and, you know, Breck Shea is one of those players that will, he'll take that opportunity and make the most of it. And that's the kind of player you want on your team. Mm -hmm. Um, it's totally disheartening when it's your team doing the losing, especially in the 90th minute where you think, okay, well, at least we'll get a draw out of this. You feel like you've played pretty evenly matched and it turns out, no, you didn't. It just takes one mistake. And I think that's where, again, where I get frustrated with Vermeer, Um, you know, it's frustrating. It's a lot of heart breaking. Yeah. Heart breaking. Or heart breaking, if you will. (laughs) Yeah. I, you noticed my tweet, Heartbreak Hotel. Yeah, heartbreaking. It was indeed. And um, 
and we've had some players go to Inter Miami, um, Victor Uloa being one of them, and he tweeted right. something about like O plus three. Oh, yeah, Victor Uloa, like good on you. I'm glad yeah. you're in a better team, but you're mm-hmm. still in Miami. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Cincinnati and Inter Miami yeah. haven't been around long enough to develop many rivalries, let alone a rivalry with each other. So hopefully, Eloa didn't get too many uh, uh, hate tweets from Cincinnati fans <laughs> for that. <laughs> they got bigger uh, fish to fry. <laughs> I've seen a few, but oh, yeah, I'm glad he's in a in a good place. Um, but I I definitely wanted Inter Miami to lose. I mean, how could I not? But I think they outplayed them, and it just takes that one goal. That's the difference between one point and three. So there was a couple of key absences for both teams, mm-hmm. uh, one of them being uh, Rodolfo Pizarro. He was also away on international duty for Mexico, and I think this was a, the time to play in Miami without one of their key creative forces. Granted, they're still a team who have Blaise Matuidi, three years removed of winning the World Cup with France, still have Gonzalo Higuain, who – has been scoring for every European club he's ever been in. So Absolutely. it's not really too much of a handicap. Uh, another absence for Cincinnati that I was a little bit curious if you knew anything about was Caleb Stanko, uh, health and safety reasons. Was he, did he get COVID or do you know? So uh, the feelings I have towards Jeff Cameron, I also have towards Caleb Stanko. I think they're kind of in the same boat. So uh-huh. if it were COVID, I haven't heard anything specifically, but I wouldn't be surprised if you pick up what I'm putting down. And then as for the substitutes in this game, uh, Cincinnati relied on Brandon Vasquez, mm-hmm. Calvin Harris. No, not that Calvin Harris. Um, <laughs> Kamahelo Makocho, one of my favorite names to say in MLS, the South African international, and Florian mm-hmm. Velo. Uh, do you think any of those players, if they were inserted into the starting lineup, could perhaps improve FC Cincinnati? Or are you happy enough with the availability Um, of the starting 11 you know it's frustrating because I can't Mm -hmm. point my finger and say our players aren't talented right like right they're not I mean they are and it's like what is the magic that's missing that FC Cincinnati can't necessarily find um it's not unusual for us to see Brandon Vasquez subbed in and not starting um I think that's I think that's what we expect out of him. Um, Florian Velo is is new to mm-hmm. FC Cincinnati, so um, he has started, but um, I think he'll be a great player. I want to see more out of him. Um, I I think these are good subs. I don't necessarily think that it has added anything magical, if you feel me. Yeah. But it, it's really it's just because something is not cohesive in the way we play. Something is just not there yet. I don't know if it's coaching. I don't know if it's top down. Like we, we speculate all the time, like what's the problem here? And I definitely can't say that it's the players. We have some really talented players. We're yeah. just not getting the most out of them. Right. And this might sound like a bit of an out of left field question, Abby, but I'll, it'll make sense in a minute. Have you heard of a player named Percy Tao? No. So Should I he be is, pressing on him? I'm just kidding. He is a, uh, well, he has Maybe. many of crushes from his native country of South Africa. He was a winger who, he was signed by Brighton, but due to visa issues, they had to loan him out for several seasons. So mm-hmm. he only made a few appearances for Brighton before eventually getting sold. And every time Brighton would release a lineup or even mention Percy Tao, South African Twitter would flood their pages Mm-hmm. Uh, imagine if Kamahela Makocho he became a starter for FC Cincinnati how many uh, followers FC Cincinnati would get from South Africa <laughs> unbelievable and he was with us last season and right. he is a pretty uh, aggressive player oh yeah as you'd expect from a defensive mid <laughs> yeah he is he's super aggressive he's fun to watch um he he looks a little yellow card on you so you gotta watch it out yeah and a few other key names for Inter Miami, uh, Indiana Vasilev, he's an American player on loan from Aston Villa, another great name. Uh, MLS and their name game is going strong. Hopefully they sell some jerseys. And they also seem to be a bit of an island of misfit English players in Inter Miami. You see Ryan Shawcross, who was at Stoke City for several years, Kieran Gibbs, uh, and 
Do you think Kieran Gibbs is happier at Inter Miami than he would be if he were still at Arsenal or West Brom? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think anyone's happier than being at Arsenal right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think these players they just want to play, right? Like, I don't know necessarily like how much club loyalty they feel they have, but they know they can come here and they're going to get those minutes in and they're going to get that experience. And I think that's something that MLS is doing is you know, reaching out to higher caliber international players. And so it's, I think MLS is a unique experience versus the Premier League. Yeah, I b- agree. And it is really cool to see, you know, I followed the Premier League extensively for 12 years now or so, maybe a little bit longer. Um, it was around the 2010 World Cup and seeing some of these more obscure players, like I don't imagine the typical American player who, doesn't even remember Stokes. I mean, typical American fan who doesn't even remember Stokes City were a Premier League club uh, knows who Ryan Shawcross is. But for me, he, I recognize him. I was like, oh, cool. He, it's cool to see him in MLS. We'll see what he can still do. Uh, when I was uh, researching Inter Miami for, for this uh, matchup, uh, on the MLS uh, absence list on their website, they listed Kieran Gibbs out for international duty. Um, Kieran Gibbs hasn't represented England since 2015, so MLS, uh, use your noodle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Although it's it's kind of fun because sometimes I think they come here and they get this second opportunity that they necessarily wouldn't have gotten if they would have stayed Premier League or if they would have, you know, right. gone down a couple tiers. Right, to uh, so, championship or yeah. League One or Two even. Yeah. Even that, um, they still get to come here and MLS is, is big big they pull huge crowds Mm -hmm. so you know it's a great opportunity I know like we joke about it it's like oh MLS is where international players come for their career to die and I don't you know that's not always the case it's not always the case the example I was bringing up is Robbie Keane he was only 31 when he made the switch and joined LA Galaxy he still appeared for Ireland in the 2012 and 2016 Euros he still scored some key goals for them so it's possible. Sometimes you're just latin and you just come to try it on for a while. And the biggest challenge is not always like, you know, MLS, you know, it's still high quality soccer, mm-hmm. still high quality football. The biggest challenge for like European internationals is the time difference and the jet lag if they have to go back and forth. Um, and my last note for this match, Cincinnati are still very cursed, which oh, n- my needs God, no yeah. further explanation. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's who is so who would your, your player of the match be? Sorry if I cut you off, Abby. Oh, no. Uh, it's come on, it's Breck Shea. You won yes. the whole thing, <laughs> like, you yeah. made the whole difference in that entire match. You come in clutch at the 90 and just you got the three points, you walk away the hero. Man of the match, it would take a significant injury crisis and perhaps. Greg Beralter to uh, have had a few drinks prior to <laughs> announcing his USMNT roster for Breck Shea to ever get another cap again. But for MLS, you cannot underestimate the power of Breck Shea goal and the shockwave he'll say, send around MLS and the internet if you concede one to him. So fair play, Breck Shea. My honorable mention for FC Cincinnati would be Isaac Atanga. His name was said frequently as I was listening mm-hmm. to the game. Uh, he was causing Breck Shea problems defensively, even though he did have that moment of magic to score the goal. So I think it will be interesting to see if Atanga gets another start when Matarita is back from international duty. But I think it's still very much possible, depending on the formation and maybe shuffling a few players around. So we'll keep that in mind. Any other thoughts before we move on to the Quake scene? No, let's go. Let's yeah. go. All right. So... It's a bit case of deja vu. It ended in a similar fashion. Uh, the Rapids goal came a little bit sooner than uh, Breck Shea's goal for Inter Miami. But in any case, the Quakes lineup was JT Morsinkowski in goal. Yeah, Luciano Abacasis, Nathan Osvaldo Lanis, and Tanner Beeson in a back line. I believe Tanner Beeson was playing left back in this formation, even though he's more normally a center back. And this is Nathan's first game back from suspension since he received a red card uh, two games ago. Then we have Eric Remedy and Jitson in the uh, center of the park. Uh, Jackson Mule as a number 10. 
Chofis and Shea Salinas were the wingers, and Jeremy Abobasi was intended to be the striker, and then he got hurt within six minutes. And it was a reckless challenge from Alisson Bubakar, one that he still got uh, hurt from committing it, too. It was a bit nasty, and there's no uh, uh, taking chances with concussion-like situations, so both were subbed off. Lalas Abubakar only got a yellow instead of a red, and we'll talk a little bit more about that with the uh, fan questions, but that was a scary moment, and it changed the game because you have the Rapids. They have to sub in Drew Moore, who he's a reliable MLS-level player, but he's getting older. He's not a player who plays every week, and then Kate Cowell, who uh, Almeida was expecting to use him as a super sub. He's very quick. He's very uh, dangerous for opposing defenders to deal with, especially when they're tired. Now Cowell has to uh, play a lot earlier. And for Cowell, perhaps it's a good thing because he has lost a starting spot, it appears, despite being an MLS All-Star with the acquisition of Jeremy Obobese. Uh It's going to be uh, uh, a Bit of an uphill battle for Cowell to uh, regain his starting spot, and that battle got a little bit tougher because it wasn't his best night. He had some moments, but his opportunities were a bit squandered this game. Uh, your thoughts on Kate Cowell? Um, he is soccer crush worthy. Okay, that's what I I need to say is Kate Cowell is would be my my quicks crush. Are you sure about that? Because a- should, should I remind you how old he is? <laughs> Um, it's innocent. Yeah, it's soccer a crush. it's a friendly crush. I know, I know. <laughs> it's not soccer crush after dark crushes. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's at least on the west coast. It's still five thirty nine in California. So definitely not after dark for me. It's, it's after dark here. So yes, it's eight thirty nine in uh, Cincinnati. Um, I think so. I was I was keeping up with this match, and I was right. doing these the ESPN updates um because you know when you're trying to do 1100 things at once and I saw that in the six minute the substitutions and it was super worrisome I hate when you make substitutions that early because it's clearly a serious injury and all I can tell you from the numbers is it looked like the most evenly matched like there were times where like San Jose had possession maybe like 53 percent of the time and come on, Kate Cowell, if you're fighting for that starting position, this is your shot. Like you handed to you on silver platter with a bogus injury. Like you might not get another chance like this. Yeah. Yeah. You had to come in and do 100%. And it didn't seem that that really kind of happened. Um, even though the chance was there. Um, so, and you also have to like, he's young. Maybe this is, yeah. just, he needs that experience. And, and maybe this is a good learning experience for him, but I don't it, think you're going to stop seeing good things from him in yeah. general. I think something we do have to remind ourselves is that with a young player, it's not always an upper, upward trajectory just when they break into like a sub role or starting role or whatever. It's going to be ups and downs. And I think that's what Kate Cal is going through right now. And this is a guy who turns 18 in October. Uh, so happy one month early birthday for him um, but he's still got a long way to go especially in MLS where y- you have a lot of players rookies that come out of college 21 22 so he's coming from the academy uh, at a very young age and he's already contributed some great things clearly he didn't get an MLS all-star selection by fluke and I think it's not the end of the world if he's a super sub. It's not the end of the world if you were giving more experienced players in this crunch time of the season uh, the starting roles because we know Christian Espinosa can handle the pressure. Jeremy Bobasi, he is of the front three we're using. He's the most MLS experienced of those three, so he can handle the pressure. Chofis Lopez, he's played in Liga MX. He's, Liga MX he's, is so pressure packed. He knows how to deal with that. So Kate Cowell will remain an important part of the team for as long as he's still with San Jose Earthquakes, which even if he's not playing his best, he's still going to be attracting interest from European clubs and Mexican clubs and the like uh, for, you know, the upcoming transfer window. There's no doubt about that. No, I think he'll be exciting. And where was Christian Espinosa this match? 
I thought he was one of the better players, in truth. Uh, a lot of his crosses were wasted, two of them by Luciano Abacasis, who was the first tactical sub of this game. You didn't think so? I wasn't watching. No, so, okay. <laughs> so I didn't get to see it. I just get stopped. You just gave me that, like, a slight yeah, nod no, well, thinking. <laughs> I was, um, no, I wasn't I wasn't watching. So Okay, I didn't sorry, just make sure. Pop up, you know what I mean? Like, you get, like, yeah. the major things. Like, yes got missed and I didn't see him so well yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I sometimes and that's what's missed is the contribution you yeah. don't necessarily always get the recognition that you deserve exactly uh if you're a very much an sister kind of guy and whether it's in soccer with this in basketball your effectiveness to the team does depend on that mm-hmm. person who you're assisting or attempting to assist you Absolutely. making their opportunities count um Clay Thompson, when he's healthy, he gets a lot of assists for the Warriors. But if Draymond Green's having a two for 10 shooting night, then Clay Thompson, by by process of elimination, is also going to uh, suffer yeah. as well. So yeah. that's kind of what happened with Christian Espinoza. Uh, he set up Lucian Abacasis two times with some crosses uh, uh, and neither hit the target. So that was a bit disappointing. Uh, a- but he... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that's one of the statistics. So um, you're like a soccer encyclopedia to me. And I <laughs> Thank you. That so much. Um, one of the statistics that I've been paying more close attention to in the past, I don't know, year or so is who is making the most opportunities mm-hmm. and how important that is. It's not always just who's scoring the goals, but who is is creating the most chances. And so that's just a fire kind of player, in my opinion. Yeah. But you and, need somebody that can capitalize on it. Right. So Abby, if I were to ask you, what was the most forgettable MLS club? Oh yeah. Would it be the Rapids? It's absolutely the Rapids. I don't remember them ever. I couldn't tell you anyone who plays. Um, even though there was a Colorado Rapids player in the Gold Cup this summer. Yeah, not important. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're just such an unexciting club to me, and I, I don't want to offend anyone, but they're just, I don't know. They also never have cool kits and... Burgundy, like it's a unique color. <laughs> More so in MLS than in... Uh, England because you have Aston Villa yeah, and Burnley and West Ham. There's a lot of Burgundy there, but no, um, Rapids are totally forgettable to me. I I don't think about them. So how shocked are you that they're currently second in the West? Totally shocked. It's almost like so in the East right now with New England Revolution on top. It's it's almost the same feeling <laughs> where I'm like, really, it's New England. Um, same kind of feeling. It's that they're so forgettable to me that them doing well is always surprising. Where I'm like, really, you're not. I expect the the Portlands or the Seattle's, and maybe that's part of it, is is my expectations. So, they're definitely on my radar more so this season. I'll say that. All right, that's an improvement. So, I won't go through the whole lineup since you won't recognize any of them. But the key moment of the match uh, was uh, they yeah. subbed on Dominic Baji, a Senegalese forward in the 80th minute and he scored a minute later it was assisted by nicholas mosquito who fabi will be excited about because co-host fabi he's uruguayan and mosquito is uruguayan so it's bittersweet because an uruguayan assisted the goal that doomed quakes and going to this match both the rapids and the quakes had a unbeaten streak quakes were unbeaten in 10 games i believe the rapids were unbeaten in six games going to this and they made it seven Quakes, you know, no longer an unbeaten streak. But if it had to end against any team, it was probably going to be against the Rapids. Uh, they, Their squad, if you did go on Wikipedia and read their names, it wouldn't be like, okay, this doesn't look like a strong on paper as like a Seattle or LAFC or Portland or whoever. But they're a really good squad. They've got some young talent. They've got some international players like Kellen Acosta and Mark Anthony K who weren't in this game because of international duty. And they're consistent. They're one of the most consistent teams in MLS. 
Uh, I don't if they're probably the least likely team right now to lose a game by multiple goals. Like even Sporting Kansas City, who they're one of the stronger teams in the Western Conference as well. They got demolished by LAFC the other day. So you don't see that too often from Colorado Rapids, at least this iteration of the Rapids, when they had some very low lows in the mid 2010s in the years following their MLS Cup victory in 2010. So I tell you that what it's like being a, at the low lows. And yeah. You know, maybe you don't have the most player uh, recognition and that's fine, but it really goes to show how well coaching and chemistry um, yeah. affect a match. And, and when you have a squad that is just playing so consistently well, it really does take you far, even if, it's unexpectedly so good for them yeah wow. it was well deserved for Colorado Rapids uh Matias Almeida mentioned that they do have a couple games in hand and he believes that they have what it takes to potentially finish top at the end of this uh regular season for the Western Conference should the teams around them continue to slip up so it's definitely looking good for them a player of the match for me I am going to go with uh Similarly with you, Dominic Baji, it was a very close to the vest kind of game for both teams. So he produced the goal. So I'm going to give man the match to him for the quicks player of the match. Uh, I asked the fans to vote between either Nathan Espinoza. Um, who else? Nathan Espinoza. There's one other Salinas and uh, I left the fourth option blank saying, if you have another option, you can reply in the uh, tweets. Uh, the only other person that got an honorable mention from that was Remedy. And I left him off because he uh, was pretty reckless in this game. You talked about Kamahela Makocho and how angry he can get. Remedy has that uh, temper as well. And he got a yellow card, which means he's suspended for the next game. And we can't afford suspensions right now. We have three games coming up in a space of a week from September 11th through September 18th. So that's going to hurt. So I didn't consider him for my man of the match. The fans chose Nathan and Nathan, uh, he's our new signing from the summer. He's a Brazilian uh, center back. He does this thing where every time he prevents a goal or d- completes a tackle uh, he celebrates as if he's in the nfl and he like broke up a pass or something it's great i love it (laughs) that's exciting that's fun yeah it is fun and normally he's been an easy choice for man of the match for me but i do want to give some recognition for christian espinoza because he put in the work he deserved to get an assist on the night it was just a day where the quakes weren't converting their chances so espinoza i hope this Player of the match for me means something to you and you get an actual reward in your next game. <laughs> yeah, I will I will second that. <laughs> I am I think Christian Espinoza is a consistent player. Yeah, he's very consistent. Like, that you can like count on, you know how he's gonna perform. So he's probably he's one of the more talented players. I would say without question, he was the most talented player before K Cowell broke breakout and Fans can debate that, but he's definitely a player that can be underappreciated at times, but I don't know where the Quakes would be without him. I think he's definitely that creative force that can unlock defenses that the Quakes desperately need more of. So we'll take a brief look at the standings here. Uh, Cincinnati, 17 points, 13 points away from D.C. United. Um, If there was ever a time in the season you were thinking about playoffs, that time is not now, right? No, it, no, we don't talk about playoffs in Cincinnati <laughs> ever. We're just cursed in general. It doesn't happen for us in any sport. So I'll try not to jinx the Reds. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right. As for the sounds of earthquakes, their situation is not quite as perilous, but still very nervous. Uh, they are on 26 points. They're 10th in the Western Conference. Good news is they're four po- only four points away from seventh place Rail Salt Lake. And they play Rail Salt Lake in one of their next three games. So they have they have to win that game to make up ground. It's in their hands still. The bad news is all seven of those Western Conference teams are pretty are doing pretty well right now. I know I said uh, 
one of the teams above them, LAFC, they lost, they uh, inflicted a big loss to Sporting Kansas City, but that's how much of a bloodbath this playoff race is going to be. Uh, LAFC, they're not going to go down without a fight. They're in ninth with 27 points. Vancouver Whitecaps, like they've kind of been revived. They added a Scottish midfielder, Ryan Gold, and they're looking pretty strong too. It wouldn't surprise me if they made the playoffs too. The only teams I think that are out of the playoff race in the West are two thirds of the Texas trio. Yeah. Oh man. I keep up with Austin kind of closely just because we have a lot of soccer crush Austin fans. Right. And my heart hurts for them. Austin, I get it. Like I get what it's like to love a losing team. I must say, uh, Austin FC, uh, fans, you're doing a great job supporting your team though. You're in terms of atmosphere, in terms of the stadium, in terms of fan support, Austin FC probably are higher up in the MLS for an expansion team than we expected them to be. Yeah, absolutely. Los Verdes, they're awesome. And then Eastern Conference, it's like the New England Revolution or Usain Bolt. That's how much of a lead they have on the rest of the field. Um, I think the Revolution have just played consistently all season. Um, and they're just annihilating everybody. And They've done this with Carlos Gill missing significant time. It, isn't it weird? Does that not feel weird to you? It feels super but weird to me. Doing well, um, I don't, I, it's nice though. I feel like we're seeing a lot of different names in the mix. And that's always thrilling. I live through some of that chaos. So um, I know in the Eastern Conference for me to see Columbus not performing as well as what we would expect from, you know, the reigning champions. Eh, it's all, I'm a little petty, but it's, it's kind of fun. Any other but, thoughts on the standings before we move on? Um, yes, I hate Orlando City and Nashville. So <laughs> um, at any time. Second would, and third. If any time they would like to start losing, that would be fine by me. What if Columbus missed the playoffs? What would your reaction be? Um, if Columbus makes the playoffs and or misses, or if they miss it, okay. If they miss it, I don't know who I'll root for. So anyone oh, okay. give me a suggestion and I will do it. But if Columbus does make the playoffs and Cincinnati clearly is not, I have to say Ohio against the world and I want to see Columbus do well. Um, we have this, you know, love hate rivalry with them and hell is real. <laughs> yeah. Hell is real. So bring it back home to Ohio. How did you feel then when they won the MLS cup last season? Um, I love and hate them. So <laughs> even in my own family, my brother is a, a big Columbus crew fan. So um, I was happy for them. Um, I don't necessarily want to say they deserved it. It was COVID cup, but you know, they put in the work, they did it good for them. Um, but I don't think they're playing like, like they're defending a championship. So they're a little unserious. <laughs> yeah. Columbus. Uh, I, I was born in Oakland and I've lived in the East Bay area my whole life. So Oakland has lost its Warriors team technically to San Francisco, even though they're still in the same market. Uh, Oakland's football team is now in Las Vegas and they're threatened to lose their baseball team, the Oakland Athletics. So Columbus, there's been a couple of times where the crew were threatened to be relocated. And even the Blue Jackets are one of the teams that when NHL uh, relocation is talked about, they're one of the teams on that list. So I relate to Columbus on that level. Oh, same. Yeah. I am. Yeah, I know. It was save the crew. Like every yeah. I, hashtag I save the crew. Anyone, anyone in Cincinnati, I, I've supported that. We wanted that rivalry here. We wanted to keep them here. I'm glad they got it. Um, you know, they have their new stadium. They have a huge fan base. They're original MLS. Like leave them where they'd be. Let them be happy. Like Ohio is proving that, you know, we are a soccer state too. And, you know, good for them. But yep they can also suck it <laughs> <laughs> all right so i had the opportunity to go to the quakes game last night it was a uh, mexican heritage night so that's why i'm wearing my mexican national team Yay. jersey there um it was only right it was great to feel represented i am mexican american so uh, i whenever i get a chance to go to a sporting event with one of those theme nights it feels awesome and in a different way, I enjoy going when it's Filipino heritage, any sort of cultural group heritage or pride, pride celebration yeah. or something, because yeah. these are all important communities to the Bay Area. These are all important communities to MLS and sports in general that deserve yeah. to be celebrated. I love um, 
I think I think soccer just globally takes that very seriously in the diversity and they understand their fan base and um, and I'm always thrilled to do things like that. Um, I always love seeing teams and clubs and supporters groups um, invest in, in that stuff because you know it's it's for the greater community. We need yeah. to be seen and represented. Like Abby Wambach said in Abby's places, uh, soccer is love. Amen. God love her. Yeah, she's awesome. Uh, on that note, with uh, what I experienced last night at the post-game pref- press conference, Almeida said every game at this point is a must win. And it starts for the Quakes on Saturday, September 11th. FC Dallas versus San Jose Earthquakes, 5 p.m. Pacific. Abby, if you want to watch with me, uh, 8.30 for you. Hey, uh, hopefully you can it. stay up uh, on that Saturday. Yeah. Uh, it's obviously a very important day in our nation's history, the 20th anniversary of 9-11. So uh, in case I don't podcast uh, on th- that day specifically, I do want to just uh, briefly mention and not to, you know, I know you might – feel old for a second but I was six years old when those attacks happened my parents <laughs> took me from school I didn't know what the hell was going on until I saw the tv and I was just thinking is this some kind of movie like what are we watching why am I not in school and then I started to realize as much as a six-year-old could the gravity of that situation and then I started to learn about it in school as I grew older I started to experience it whenever we went to anywhere to travel at an airport and being the you know white passing Mexican American that I was um, I unfortunately didn't know until much later when I started meeting new friends and talking to them the experiences that Muslim Americans Middle Eastern Americans, those groups of people were feeling because of these events. So those attacks were awful. And I feel for anyone who lost a family member who lost their lives uh, during those attacks, for anyone who was a firefighter, first responder, forever thankful for them. And I also want to acknowledge to any of our listeners who were, you know, received so much hate, or their family received hate because of those attacks, because of heinous responses to those attacks that you're a welcome member of this community you're a welcome person in general you know and I hope you feel welcomed as much as possible and we can continue to end those kinds of hate and we can be a stronger nation because of what we lessons we have learned not necessarily from a political standpoint but from a social standpoint absolutely I wholeheartedly agree I was a little bit older than you when it yeah. happened. And you don't have to tell me how. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was fourteen. I had just started high school, and um, and so I was very well aware. I also um, I'm from a military base, and that was oh, yeah. very weird. Um, it was just a weird day, and something that I have never forgotten. But I think you're right. Um, there's room for everybody here. There's room yeah. for everybody in the community. Um, there's no room for any kind of that that ignorance or hate, and um. You know, we have so many fantastic Muslim players yeah. in soccer in general, and, you know, they don't deserve any of that. So if you're any of those trolls on the internet, just stop it. Don't be jerks. Thank yeah, you for- a few that come to mind, uh, just Miram, he played for the Columbus crew. Uh, he's of Iraqi descent. Uh, he represented his national team, a former Quakes player and now Rapids player who made a late sub appearance last night, Stephen Bayesher. Uh, he was with us when we won our 2012 Supporter Shield, and he played for Iran in the 2014 World Cup, part of that roster. Um, those are just a few examples. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, regarding the matches on that day, uh, what would your prediction be for Cincinnati versus Toronto? Okay, so this might be the only team in MLS we have a chance at beating. Oh, they're yeah, Toronto or Dumpster Fire. Yeah, they're the only ones doing worse than us. And I swear to God, like, we just want to win at home. Like, that's it. We haven't done it yet. It's it's a brand new stadium. It's so cool. Just bring us home a win. So is that what you're predicting, a 1-0 win, maybe? I just want them to win however they can. <laughs> but one, if you had to one, look in the future. 1-0 will do the job, Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll put my prediction in stone. Cincinnati yeah. 1-0 Toronto. Okay, I okay, think 
they will manage that, but they might not win another game, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That that sounds fair. That's fair. If we could just win that one, I'll let it. I'll let the rest of the season go. It's fine. I won't get my hopes up. Do you have a prediction for FC Dallas versus San Jose Earthquakes? Oh yeah, I th- I think the Quakes totally have Dallas on it. Like, I think you're at least scoring multiple times on them. I think we win two one. Doing... Okay, I'm gonna go three one. Three one. Okay, yeah, I think I think two one, and depending on uh, the timing on whether or not Ricardo Pepe comes back, he's either gonna score or assist that one goal for Dallas. I... Uh, <laughs> that's you i don't think you're gonna get like a clean sheet there but i think you'll get the win all right and we have a few topics to talk about i'll just uh, bring them up and then I, I would like to know your thoughts and i'll share my okay. thoughts so we have three big moves that we're going to focus on from the transfer window Messi to okay, psg what good. was your thought on that um it was hard watching Messi cry about Bar- leaving Barcelona. That was devastating, but I think he's at a good place at PSG. That roster is absolutely stacked. Like, if you were doing dream roster, like, as things are right now, man, you got a lot of talent. So it, it'll be fun. It's always fun watching Messi play. Yeah, and this is going to be – the pressure is on uh, more so PSG than Messi, I think. Messi's yeah. already won – Champions League multiple times. Yeah. His life is fine. PSG, you've invested so much money to win the Champions League. No one cares. No one gives an F if you win another league on title or any of those domestic cups. Champions League are bust for you guys. So good luck. Uh, Chelsea's coming for you, though. Yeah. I don't <laughs> care if Neymar has a birthday party with whatever relatives. Figure it out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ronaldo to Manchester United. Um, oh. I'm a Manchester United fan, so I'm a bit happier about this than you are. You got Lukaku, yeah. though. I um, I don't like him as a person. I think he is trash. True. As um, a person, I understand. Yes. Um, I, uh, I, I think Man U had enough talent without him. Um, but now we don't have to play Anthony Martial. Yeah, but it's a good problem to have. (laughs) I think you totally underestimate your, you know, your Jaden Sancho and your Jesse Lingard and your Marcus Rashford. We definitely underestimate Jesse Lingard. They clearly haven't paid attention to what he did for West Ham on loan. He pulled it at West Ham and, Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they called him back because they saw him, he was on fire. And I just, I don't think Ronaldo should be playing at all, but that's, for personal reasons, I just yeah. I think that United had a had a solid roster and they should have put a little more faith in it. I don't think you need. We should have signed a D mid. Yeah. Because so. we still got either Fred or McTominay. I like McTominay a little bit more than Fred. Um, Fred makes a few too many mistakes mm-hmm. compared to him, but either one, I'm not entirely sold on them going forward. Uh, Pogba obviously is going to occupy one of those midfield spots. The question is, Donny Van de Beek, either play him or let the man go next summer. I was so excited when they signed him. I'm really disappointed that we've wasted him so far. Um, I hate when people say that Manchester United is ruining this player's career because most of the time it's BS. Donny Van de Beek still has a long way to go, but this would be one of those times where it's not BS. I, yeah, I guess we'll find out, huh? What were your thoughts on Chelsea's business? I didn't put that on the notes, but you're a Chelsea fan, so. Chelsea, yeah. Um, I mean, come on. We brought Lukaku home. Uh, mm-hmm. Olivier Giroud left us. Oh, Fair enough. big sexy. I, I know. Lots of hearts were broken that day, but uh, I think Lukaku is going to work out well. Um, it's unbelievable the depth of Chelsea's roster when you sub in Nicolo Conte. You know what I mean? Like, Nicolo Conte is a sub. Yeah. So I, you know, you win the Champions League. I, Thomas. My Cole. brain is broken with that sentence, but that's what they're doing because yeah. they've been using Kovacic. They've been using Jorginho. They've been using mm-hmm. Mason Mount. Yeah. Where did Ruben Loftus Cheek? Like, <laughs> but yeah. And, you know, Ruben Loftus Cheek was loaned out last season. Uh, Thomas Tuchel decided to keep him. 
um, you have a ton of, ton of really talented forwards, you know, the team of earners who just scored back-to-back -back goals for Germany and, and Kai Havertz. So I think I'm really looking forward to seeing like a Kai Havertz, Mason Mount, Lukaku like link up because I think they're three incredibly solid players. Um, Chelsea's not, not to be messed with, I think. I agree. We'll it's see. A whole lot's going on in London right now. Brentford are doing okay for themselves. And you got Patrick Vieira with Crystal Palace. West yeah. Ham of a surprise package this season. And then the big stories, of course. Tottenham and top, Arsenal in 20th. <sighs> Abby, your thoughts. Okay, well, please tune into Soccer Crush and you can hear all of my thoughts on Tottenham and, and Harry Kane. Um, <laughs> I, as a Chelsea fan, I hate the Spurs, but, you know, I can't hate Sun. He is one of those players that you just, you can't hate him. I think he's on fire. He's absolutely fantastic. And even much to my dismay, I will give Harry Kane that credit too. He's an unbelievably consistent player. He's and incredible. It makes me so mad. It makes me so mad, but I hate that they're on top. Maybe not for long. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Premier League is, is it right now. I think uh, Man City is... Also not to be dismissed. They bought Jack Grealish, but not a striker. <laughs> Weird, right? Um, they, still, they still are a force to be reckoned with. <sighs> absolutely. Um, and don't underestimate Jack Grealish. We saw him a lot in the Euros with England. Mm -hmm. And he performs consistently well. He he was great at Villa. And I think he was ready for this that next Is step. he crush worthy? Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> I currently have the the fantastic uh, Euros shirt, Mrs. Grealish, sixty nine. <laughs> that yeah. was that incredible. Woman was the greatest. Um, <laughs> just it was my favorite Euros moment. So that's <laughs> on my lower board in my room. It's just you know. So that's how he's definitely crush worthy. Abby, can, is there a player in soccer where you would wear their jersey, misses their name, six nine? Um. Absolutely. There's a whole list of them. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in to Soccer Crush to find we out. Start with like Mrs. U.S. Women's National Team 69. Oh, just all like, of them. Crush, crush them all. Okay. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You want to come talk crushes? Come hang out with us. This is probably new territory for those of you who just listened to Tectonic Takes <laughs> podcast, not Soccer Crush, but this is totally fine. Like, it's okay to like, soccer players sure. okay so <laughs> in that way yeah yeah our whole our whole deal is you just talk about it casually with your friends it's fun everybody loves somebody right yeah and we can go on an entire podcast talking about world cup qualifying just today brazil argentina had the health and safety protocol debacle and match was interrupted between guinea and uh morocco due to a coup d'etat in guinea and we're definitely uh keeping an eye on that situation, hoping for the best for the citizens there. And Italy breaking the record for the longest and beaten international streak. Um, are you worried about the USA uh, when they drew just 0-0 to El Salvador in El Salvador? I always worry about <laughs> USA. Um, I am not a U.S. men's national team supporter. I will, I will say I don't have the most faith in them. Um, they're not good, man. They're just, <laughs> you know, there's some great players. Um, I don't want to knock them because I, I think they all work hard, but I think that there are a lot of teams that go overlooked because of all of the rigmarole and hoopla that follow the U S men's team. Okay. And also at this time, as we are recording, uh, the U S and Canada are tied at halftime. So, um, Canada are a better team than El Salvador. So a tie against them isn't as bad of a result, but still the USA will have to pick up points soon if they want to qualify this time around. And since you're here, we do want to talk a little bit about women's soccer. Uh, so what are your thoughts on NWL this season and, uh, racing Louisville being an expansion club? It is Okay. I love women's soccer. Everyone should be supporting women's soccer. It's so much fun. Yep. Um, NWSL, I don't know if you know the history of women's soccer in the United States, but that it's been you know, up and down. Previous leagues have failed until this one. 
Absolutely. Um, a bit chaotic, if you will. But I think NWSL is really getting a little momentum. We're seeing um, more expansion clubs and, and we want to absolutely see that. And this is Racing Louisville's first season um, and they're, you know, the closest NWSL club to me where I live. You saw them uh, draw 1-1 to OL Reign? I did. So that was um, Saturday night. Um, and I, I'm an OL Reign fan. Rose Lavelle is there. <laughs> Um, she's from Cincinnati and, and unbelievable, but I'm also a big Sierra King fan. And I mentioned her as my soccer crush and I was on your podcast. Remember yeah, that? <laughs> I do. Um, how do you not love her? But what was exciting about it is women's soccer is just as exciting as men's soccer. They go just as hard. It's just as fast and aggressive and you're seeing all the same things. Um, it was disappointing not to see the stadium sold out you know we had an eleven thousand seat stadium and it was only half full which you know be careful covid watch at home support however you want to but um it's just we need more clubs we need more financial support we need more you know it's more than just the u.s women's national team and i do love them but there are some really fantastic women playing soccer that um don't get the the platform that maybe a Megan Rapino or an Alex Morgan does. Yeah. Um, speaking of, you know, of Muslim players or yes. diversity, uh, Racing Louisville has a player, Nadia Nadim. She is absolutely on fire. She is from Afghanistan, was a refugee. She's written an incredible article about it. Um, and it, it just go check out these women that are killing it on and yeah. off the pitch. Yeah. Absolutely. And for those of you who just watch women's soccer, if at all, during the World Cup, maybe you're thinking of the time U.S. women's national team beat down Thailand and the whole controversy was like, oh, wow, is that fair? Is that unfair? Or they're being bad sports or whatever. And whether or not you'd ask that question to men's soccer, remember that all these women from top to bottom of the international soccer pyramid, they're incredible at what they do. They face so many obstacles, you know, so much misogyny, some places more than others, like Argentina, they've had to yeah. struggle to fund their teams in places like, you know, Asia, it's been a challenge due to the customs that they may uh, encounter there. In USA, we're not immune to those challenges either. Very much so, right, Abby? Absolutely. I mean, um, women here still can't get equal pay. We don't have, you know, nobody is investing in it in the same in the same way that they are in MLS or even in USL. Um, One so positive about the, yeah. I'm so sorry for interrupting. No, no, no. Go ahead. One go positive ahead. about the equal pay front, Ireland announced that mm -hmm. they were going to pay their women's international players the same amount as their men. Yeah, I, I and we need to bring that, up. that conversation <laughs> everywhere. Um, but exciting for you being in California, you're getting two new clubs. Right. And this might feel like first world problems for those of you not in California, that we're getting a club in LA and a club in San Diego. Uh, LA have announced that they're going to have Kristen Press join uh, Angel City. Um, that still leaves a whole half of the state that doesn't have a club and you're technically a situation there. I mean, if you want to, if Cleveland were to have, or, or even Columbus uh, NW South club, but still hoping for San Jose to join that movement there. But um, uh, for now I'm more than happy for uh, LA and San Diego to join the NW. So it's very important to cover that market because California has so many youth soccer players, a lot of women's youth soccer players, including in that population. And that's going to be great if you're, you know, for those who, those of us who have those rivalries in other sports, oh, I can never root for an LA club. If you had to make an exception, support the women's soccer clubs yeah. in LA or at least San Diego. Like you don't have to root for LA because you get San Diego too. So that's what we did. I mean, mm -hmm. um, FC Cincinnati and Louisville FC were our huge rivals in from the USL days and I hate Louisville like it's just bred into me to hate Louisville but I'm gonna go support women and women's soccer and it was fun and it was not a problem and I just want them all to do well I mean not 
better than my the club I love, but <laughs> I want them all to do well. And my theory has always been wherever there's an MLS club, there should be an NWSL club. There's a market for soccer there. People will show up. People right. will spend money. And you yeah. have women who are part of that community who cover the men's game for all those MLS clubs as well. So they can definitely grow those communities on the NWSL side as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And one we have for those of you who submitted fan questions, really appreciate it. I'm going to answer this week's fan questions on Twitter. I will give you a shout out. I will uh, at you on Twitter as well. So you get that recognition for that. But we want to close things out with uh, a special uh, event here. So when I was a guest in the Soccer Crush podcast, she gave me a questionnaire. Abby did. So I, the shoe is on the other foot this time. Yeah. Uh, so I've constructed this California quiz. Uh, okay. It's a series of questions that they'll determine which part of California is best for you. Uh-oh. And I've included just about all of California I could think of. So the categories are Chico and beyond, Sacramento, San Francisco Bay Area. So that's San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose. Central Valley, so everything from Stockton, Fresno, down to Bakersfield. Central Coast, so Monterey, San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara. Inland Empire, so that includes Riverside, San Bernardino. Greater LA area, Orange County, and San Diego. So those are the potential fates for Abby. I'm like the sorting hat in Harry Potter based on how she answers these questions. Some of these are open-ended. Some of these, I give you options. Okay, okay. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Let's do this. All right. So which of the following is your favorite theme park? Would it be Legoland, Disneyland, Great America, or Six Flags? I I love Disney. I love Disney so much. Okay. So we'll go with Disneyland. Disneyland. Yeah. Question two. How often do you watch movies? Oh, very frequently. Very frequently. Okay. All right. What's the coldest temperature that you can still enjoy? Yikes. Like for real enjoy or like I have tolerate. to tolerate this. Let's say tolerate. Oh, like you can still go about your business. Let's say in like the 50s. 50 degrees that. Fahrenheit. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's the hottest temperature? Same okay. question. I mean... This has been more relevant for California. <laughs> it, it is. Um, I was raised in Southern Alabama. So for it to get into the 100s is not unusual for me. Okay, perfect. That will open up your options for California. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> which uh, mode of transport do you prefer? A bike, bus, train, or car? Um, I love public transport. So I would say train. Sorry. Something was in my mouth. Uh, but uh, yes, train it is. Okay. How long uh, estimate is your commute to work? Oh my God. I work from home. I have no commute. When you last worked from home? Okay. When was when your, I, I mean, was, when like, in like another real? place? It was like an hour. It was an hour? Okay. What, what's your favorite fruit? Pineapple. Pineapple. Hawaii is not an option, but noted. <laughs> does pine? This is not part of the questionnaire, but does pineapple belong on pizza? Oh, absolutely. That's yeah. in my Twitter profile. If anyone was wondering, yeah. pineapple. Internet high five for you, Abby. I agree. Um, pepperoni, uh, pepperoni is my top pizza topping, but I can deal with pineapple. Yeah. All right. And this will be the last of the standard questions, and we'll have a short uh, rapid fire round. I love it. What's your favorite meal? Like time, like meal time or like what I would eat forever. And like always. if you had to prepare uh, your dream, like, you know, meal, uh, like what would it be? Um, Not necessarily breakfast, lunch or dinner, but like what would I you know, enjoy it, to it, eat? Yeah. Tacos forever. Tacos. tacos. All right. Like traditional tacos, not like. Not Taco Bell, like actual no, authentic. No, like, like like onion cilantro tacos 
Oh man, you're gonna love California. <laughs> <laughs> All right, rapid fire. Okay, beach or pool? Beach. Hike or jog? Oh, hike. Snow or rain? I hate them both, but rain. Okay. I really hate snow. Which would cause you to panic more, a fire or an earthquake? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> probably a fire. That sounds real scary to me. All right. We do have both. So, yeah. just so you know. <laughs> uh, favorite uh, sport besides soccer? Um, baseball. Baseball. All right. And favorite person from California? It could be a celebrity. that's so hard like that currently lives there or that like they on there ideally that they've lived there for a significant amount of time not necessarily someone who moved there because they're an actress or something it could be an athlete that would even if they play in college in california i'll allow that i'm gonna say Kristen press Chris and Press. Okay. All right. I have. I will calculate your answers using my noggin. And yeah. Let's say, using your sorting hat. Yes, using my sorting earthquakes hat, and I have deduced that you belong most in California in Orange County. Oh you my will God. be where Disneyland is in Anaheim. I. That is exactly where I thought I would be when you said something earlier. So I was, <laughs> I was obsessed with the OC, the TV show, and I just knew, like, it's where the I fruits are it. tropical. Pineapple and oranges are kind of different, but they're citrusy. Yeah. Come hang out plenty with me of tacos and eat tacos and go to the beach and yeah, you know, there's less fires than earthquakes i think in orange county you might feel like a 4.0 or something but uh kristen press you'll be able to see her play for angel city hey it sounds like the perfect place to be our commute <laughs> i love it all right there you go and frequent movies right. in disneyland all that i'm ready there you go so i'm glad this worked out my quiz was a su success i'm okay. eager maybe i'll get a chance to quiz beth or trish next time <laughs> hey i will let them know <laughs> all right now we're going to close out today's episode um next time you see us on tectonic takes it'll be some combination of me fabi or perhaps another guest maybe one of our other writers such as Bell. And we will talk about the uh, FC Dallas game. That'll be an away game. So the next game I will be at personally will be September 15th uh, for uh, Real Salt Lake. That'll be an interesting one as well. It's stuff to look forward to on the Tectonic Takes throughout all our social media platforms. Favi's got you covered with a lot of uh, interviews and press conference stuff that he'll upload on YouTube. So for some closing thoughts, we got to close this episode with some Tectonic Takes. And we got a couple more questions for you. So all right. as of today, in looking into the future, which club will win a trophy first? Sounds of Earthquakes or FC Cincinnati? Oh my God. Are you kidding? It's Stan Jose is winning one way before we are. I think we'll get another wooden spoon. I think there's probably a chance we can win a US Open Cup, but like, <laughs> yeah, oh, that still counts for this. So I'll take yeah, absolutely. it. Fill in the blanks, Abby. So okay. NWSL will have blank number of clubs by blank year. So I need a number of clubs and I need a year. Um, let's say they will have 25 clubs by 2032. 2032. Okay. I will say they have, just to be different, I'll say 26 clubs, a nice even number by 2035 okay yeah we're, we're growing you're on the right track yeah your pick to win the mls cup this season it's you didn't have to be from the beginning of the season just based on where we're at now who you think's lifting that trophy you know i think it's new england revolution um i think they've played <laughs> the most consistently i think they're far better than anyone in the east and you know, it, it'll depend on who they're playing in the West.
but I hate to give it to him. I think it'll depend on how healthy Carlos Gill is for the playoffs, but I'm still not convinced with them entirely. I think I think that this is going to be a lesson for them losing to LAFC. Right now, I would say Sporting Kansas City, they surprise everybody, they win that Moss Cup. I and I would hate that because Daniel Saloy is a sore loser or a sore drawer because he was very salty when we drew him this earlier this year. <laughs> but uh, I think I could see it happening. I think this will be a year where like the usual suspects like falter at the hurdles before the MLS Cup. I think so too. And lastly. Which Sounds Earthquakes player is more, mo, most crush worthy? Uh, I gave my card away a little too early. It's Kid Cow. Like, let's, let's be real. He's so fun to watch. He's young. He's up and coming. I think he's learning a lot. Um, I think he has a lot to offer. Total soccer crush worthy. My soccer crush for the Sounds Earthquakes, my man crush, more just my crush in general because I don't care. You, like, yeah. you don't have to specify that. It's Chris Wondolowski. Few oh, clubs, cool. few players represent a club as well in MLS as Chris Wondolowski has. Everything is done. MLS all time leading goal scorer. He is from Danville, which is a 45 minute drive from San Jose Quick Stadium. And he's just an all around nice guy. So Chris Wondolowski is my choice. Abby, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. It's been so much fun. Thank you for having me on. And hopefully, you know, whether it's me back on Soccer Crush or you or one of your co-hosts, Beth or Trisha, come over again for the Taconic Taste Sport. We enjoy having you. We enjoy talking about all things soccer. It's always a blast. Thank you. Thank you for the crossover. Go check us out at soccer underscore crush on Twitter. Um, and you can see me and my hot takes there. And you'll catch some Quakes crushes. Yeah. Wanda's, Wanda's made a couple of appearances. Go nominate them. Will do. And their social media accounts for Abby and the Soccer Crush podcast will be on this podcast description as well. And best of luck to FC Cincinnati with the rest of this season. Don't get that wind spoon. I believe in you. (laughs) And go Quakes. (laughs) Same. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.